Welcome, everybody. Welcome to Humor Mill Toastmasters. Oh, don't worry. I know. I know. This is the place to be if you want to have fun time hanging out with a gregarious crowd. Oops. We didn't do that. Yeah. <laughs> While enjoying scintillating speeches. <laughs> We have fun making mistakes and learning from the supportive environment. So, first thing we're going to do, oh, my name's Teresa McCoy, and I'm the president. And the first thing we're going to do is the Pledge of Allegiance. I hope everybody could stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'm looking around, and at this moment, we have no guests. But we do have our newest member. Liz is joining us, and soon we will have a formal welcome when we're back over at the CNN. Okay. So that leads me to introducing our Toastmaster of the day. <clears throat> and I do not have an intro. I can skip it. Well, Crystal is our Toastmaster of the day, and I'm going to add something to that. If it, Crystal, this was her idea to formulate Humor Mill, to branch off and create a new club. So it is with pleasure that I introduce Crystal McCain. Good evening, everyone, and welcome. Thank you so much for coming to our meeting tonight, and especially coming to this uh, different location. I hope it wasn't too out of the way, but we get to enjoy the newly renovated library. Oh, I thought we had a guest. <laughs> Is that the, uh, looking for the other group? Um, tonight, we're going to have a little bit different uh, meeting set up. Our meeting is going to be divided into three parts. The first part involves speeches. And instead of the usual manual speeches that we have that are like five to seven minutes or longer, um, tonight each uh, member and guest can give a one to two minute speech on the topics that are listed. Um, an extended elevator pitch on your profession, any type of interest or passion, or tell us about a favorite Christmas. The idea here is just to get us kind of talking and um, if you're kind of newer, just kind of you won't have to give a super long speech, as well as we get a chance to all hear from one another. Oh, we have a member. <laughs> Come on in. Welcome. Come on in. One gentleman in the back. Um, the second part of our meeting tonight is going to be evaluations. And the third part of our meeting tonight is a teaching moment. Um, and I'm just going to go through roll call before we start. Let's see. Uh, our general evaluator, uh, Joe, is not here. So it is, I've asked Bob to do it. But now that John is here, Bob, would you mind? Um, maybe uh, John could be our general evaluator tonight so we won't have. Would you, would you like to be general evaluator? I will be general okay. evaluator. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. So just serve general sir. <laughs> Make oh, that a little okay. bit easier so there won't oh, okay. be so many roles. And um, we're doing things a little bit different, and each person um, who has a role has a little sheet like this that they can read before their role, um, before you give your report. Tonight, since we're doing speeches and everyone gives a speech, we're going to have one evaluator, and that evaluator is going to be. Um, Bob Wilson. And Bob, would you give us a one sentence? Just tell us one sentence about what an evaluator does. The evaluator will look for ways to encourage, help the person improve by bringing up the good points and the not so good points that can be made even better. 
Thank you, Bob. <clears throat> Our timer tonight is going to be Liz. And Liz, if you want to just stand and tell us just one sentence about what timer does. Uh, timer is going to monitor the time during the speech. And since tonight, we pretty much everyone will have a one to two elevator speech. I will show green card at one minute, yellow card at one and a half minute, and the red card at two minutes. Great. And now your time is up. Perfect. Thank you so much, Liz. Our grammarian for tonight is Juan, and she's also doing double duty at our welcome table. And Juan, would you mind telling us uh, one sentence about what grammarian and the ha or a counter does? So the a counter, if it's a ha, then one counts how many times the speaker made the audience laugh. If a a counter, then the a counter notes and tracks words and sounds used as a crutch or a pause. A filler by anyone who speaks during the meeting. Examples are words like and, well, but, so, like, you know, and sounds such as ah, um, and er. And grammarian listens to word usage and notes any awkward or very good use of the English language and incomplete sentences or incorrect grammar. And um, we'll also note how many times each, use, each speaker uses the word of, of the day. So you want to speak about what the words of the day are? Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Juan. Thank you so much. Thank you. And John, would you mind giving us just one sentence on what the general evaluator does? Sure. Just one sentence? Yes. OK, I can't cheat. Two sentences on this. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Basically, I am going to evaluate how the meeting in general runs. Does it run smoothly? Are people keeping to their times, et cetera? Thank you. And our teaching moment will be uh, by Teresa. And Teresa, do you want to give us one sentence on what you're going to go over tonight? We're going to learn how to get to the Humor Mill website in order to get to the pathways and take our assessments and run through the navigator. Great. Thank you so much. OK, uh, before we get to our speeches, um, this person doesn't know if I'm going to ask to do this because I forgot to ask him ahead of time. But Bob, would you mind giving us a definition on our words of the day? We have two words of the day. Again, doing something a little different. We're breaking out of the mold this week. The first word, scintillating, intriguing, interesting. More than just a little interesting for that matter. So we might say, that was a scintillating conversation. You definitely weren't bored. Gregarious, outgoing, friendly, above and beyond in trying to make contact with people and getting to know them. Some might say a little just shy of over-friendly. Our meetings can be very gregarious as we seek to encourage each other. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Bob. Thank you. <clears throat> Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and get into the speech portions of our meeting. And um, we've done something a little different for this meeting in that we have bios for everyone. And Juan suggested I kind of, or someone suggested I kind of mix them up and just let everyone guess who I'm reading about. So we'll just kind of have some fun tonight and <laughs> do that a little bit different. So um, I'll just start this off and you guys kind of can guess. No. John, um, would you like to give a speech tonight? We're just doing one or two minute speeches, the whole club, um, whoever wants to participate. And Juan can fill you in on the back. She has a bio slip and you know she can give you everything in the back. If it's I would love to give a one to two minute speech tonight. Okay, great. Okay, go see Juan and she'll get you set. John, she gave it to me. Perfect, okay, great. Thank you so much, all right. Okay, so our first speaker, I'll just tell you a little bit about her, and if anyone knows who this is, just feel free to raise your hand well, or shout out. her, you blew it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, but that's, there's one, two, three, three of right, us. Okay. So. Oh, well. <laughs> so, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, here we go. A certified metabolic method coach. Can you guess? Teresa. You got it. Yeah, Teresa. Okay. So our first speaker for tonight uh, is Teresa McCoy. Metabolic. <laughs> Thank you. She's a certified metabolic. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's what we're here for to learn. Method coach. She has three boys, um, a set of twins plus one boy. And um, 
a little bit unusual about her or a hobby she has. Uh, painting is a hobby that she uses for stress reduction. And um, she's speaking on the topic tonight. She, she chose a topic that she has not yet revealed in her speech. So that ought to be pretty interesting. So if you would please help me welcome Teresa McCord. Madam Toastmaster, guests, members, this reminds me of a table topics. <laughs> and amazingly enough, my last speech was on my fear of such impromptu topics. And then I went to another Toastmasters group last week as a guest and they called me up for a table topics. It's like, oh no. So, I feel like I'm up here again, but my knees aren't shaking, and that's because of Toastmasters. I'm getting more comfortable up here. My topic tonight is more about relieving your stress in ways that for some people might cause some stress. I like painting pictures, ceramics, anything, houses, and so I use that for stress release. And I teach painting classes in restaurants, private homes, etc. Kind of like, have you heard of paint night? All right, well, I was a paint night hostess for a while. One thing that I tell them to do to take away the stress is realize that painting is strictly about muscle memory. It is not about the skill. Composition of the end product is the skill. But taking something and just trying to paint it is more about learning how to use the brushes and the paint. Just like crayons. First time you were given a crayon, were you, were you able to write your name in cursive the first time? No. It's all muscle memory. So, next time you want to have fun, go on out to a paint night, painting event, and enjoy yourself, and don't worry about what the end result is. Madam Toastmaster. All right, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Great job, Teresa. It was a wonderful speech. And I actually just want to say I think it'd be a great introduction to a longer speech and I don't know, maybe some, you know, slides and you can show us a little bit about painting basics. So that was very good. Thank you. Okay, so who's gonna be next? John, um, are you are you still working on your bio? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes, okay, you're fine. So let's see, okay. This person. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs> it's worth <right>. okay. <clears throat> okay, our next speaker, um, this person in their profession, his or her profession, uh, does operations, recruiting, office administration. Something about the family, uh, oh, I'm sorry, something unusual. Uh, the extended family and immediate family are very close to the heart. A spouse, a daughter, and a son. Any guesses? Yes, you got it. <laughs> Very good. Our next speaker is Juan, and she is going to be speaking on Christmas today. So please help me welcome Juan. Juan, come on up. Daughter. 
I started college, came December, she saw that most Christmas parties, people wore ugly sweaters. And she asked me to borrow the sweater. Therefore, in conclusion, even though this sweater was not, as a gift was not a scintillating success, it served my very gregarious daughter well in all the parties that she attended. That was Excellent. Thank you so much, Juan. <laughs> John, are you still writing or? No, no. Okay. There's enough for you too. Okay, time to turn your your test. Your exam. Yeah. If I wait to the last one, everybody will know. What's if, that? If I wait to oh. the last person, everybody will know, right? Right. Yes. Right. 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 We'll know who it is. So. Yeah, right. I just want to make sure I've got three to choose from. Okay. This person, um, for profession, works as a concierge. Yes. I don't know who it is. Who? It's you. Yes. It's me. Yes. So, yes. I work as a concierge, um, my bio, and I help um, an older woman around the house and I'm starting my own business. Something unusual about myself. Um, a lot of kids live with their parents. You heard, heard of the boomerang kids? Well, I'm a boomerang parent. I live with my son. <laughs> so I live with him. He pays rent. Um, now I'm not in the basement. So that's kind of me. And then, um, again, uh, like Teresa did, I'm not going to re reveal my topic. It's kind of a mystery topic. Um, but I'm speaking on it because it's something I'm very passionate about. So I'll kind of introduce myself <laughs> and get started. Donald Trump, the Proverbs 31 woman, and your speaker, yours truly, Crystal McCain. What do they all have in common? Any guesses? Hair. That's one good guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a hard balance here. Donald Trump, he was in the headlines today, and it wasn't good. And the Proverbs, actually, Proverbs 30. Is it 30 or 31? 31. 31. 31. Okay, 31, lady. She's in the Bible, so we already got kind of some opposite here. And then Crystal. So what do they have in common? We're all real estate investors. Yes, uh -huh. Donald Trump and his real estate. And the Proverbs 31 lady who uh, looked at some land and bought it. And then me. I am interested in real estate investing. And that is one of my passions. So um, today I'm here to, to speak about going after your passion and how to plan when there's something you want to do in life to really go after. There's three steps that we can take. And number one is just to plan. So when you have something you're very excited about, put it all on paper. You know, come up with that dream plan. Uh, put it on a cocktail napkin. Put it on a Word doc. Put it on your calendar. And write your dreams down. The next step is just kind of implementing that plan. So you want to implement to make it a successful plan. And in order to do that, you want to make sure you have good education. Going to school, maybe going on the internet and just getting some re doing some research about it. Um, and also just maybe working with some mentors so that you can have more of that, of that knowledge. And lastly, you want to have a good team in place. And finally, when you're going after your goal, it can be tough sometimes. You go after goals, life gets in the way, sometimes our plans crash and burn. But you just want to get back up and get in there and keep going. Go back to your plan, maybe you need to tweak it a little bit, tweak your implementation, but never give up. Madam Toastmaster, which is me. <laughs> so. All right. Okay, let's see. Here we go. Our next speaker for profession a uh, computer support specialist, and we'll go with something unusual next. Reading large, long novels, and uh, why are you speaking on the topic you choose? Working with people gives us many opportunities for the best or worst to come out. 
So that's why I, this person is speaking on that topic, and I'll give you some more clues. Um, profession, BA in youth ministry. Bob. Yeah, I didn't know as soon as I said that, <laughs> y'all would know. So, so that's Bob is our next speaker, so please help me welcome Bob. Sometimes when we take on a new role, or maybe an old one, we add a new aspect. And that aspect happens to be customer service. That's where we see the best, the not so good, and the worst. Because how are you supposed to respond when the individual calls and says, my computer won't turn on. Well, did you do this, do this, yes, yes, yes. Uh, how about the power button? Where's that? You know, so you see Mark as well. G3? Yes, it works! Thank you, you're a genius! Really? I'm glad we could take care of you, thank you. Click. Wasted my time. We can't say that to the person now, can we? No. <clears throat> Sometime a few years back, when computers were even more of the mystery of collection of boxes, an individual was fired. The recorded phone conversation indicated, as you went through this whole string of all the problem shooting techniques and the questions and the answers asked and all the things done, he finally realized as he get towards the end, the power went out. That's why the words went away in your computer screen. Oh! Well, you need to put everything back in the box and return it now. Why? You're too blank and... What? What? Why am I returning it? Well, ma'am, you need to tell them something important about you. What's that? You're too blank and stupid to own a computer. Yes, he was fired and he fought it for wrongful termination. Madam Toastmaster, Thank you so much, Bob, <laughs> for entertaining us. So, Bob, can, can I see your pen again? No, I thought you had something. I thought your pen. Oh no, I was. Did you have something else orange up here? That his finger. Oh, oh his yeah, finger. yeah, he has a oh, okay. I was going to say <laughs> you were color coordinated. Yeah, he is. He's very color coordinated. <laughs> so thank you for doing that. And uh, yes, I learned more about what to do and what not to do <laughs> in customer service today. <laughs> All right, so let's see. Who's next? Or maybe who's better at it than others. What's that? Or maybe who's better than yes. others. Yes, who's better than others, yes. Okay, here's our next speaker. This person works for a financial institution. This person enjoys painting. Liz. Ah, yes, you got it. Yes, Liz. Yep. Um, I'm a Liz. I can't. I can't make out this word in front of analysts. Oh, data analyst. Oh, data. Okay. <laughs> okay. Data analyst working for a financial financial institution, and she studied for her MBA at Carnegie Mellon University. Uh, Liz enjoys painting. And she'd like to introduce herself to the team and share her passions today. So please help me welcome Liz. Liz, come on up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey everyone, my name is Liz. This is my second uh, introduction, second icebreaker. The topic I'd like to share about today is my passion for painting. As uh, some of you may know that I had that passion for painting since I was a baby. I guess because my dad was an oil painter and uh, he had all the wall in my bedroom with his paintings. My mom used to say that I was a pretty naughty girl, but I was the only moment when I was quiet is when I saw my dad's painting. I got very absorbed in those paintings. But that was my childhood, just absorbed in my dad's painting. And also, I asked my dad and my mom to send me to a painting school on the weekend, during weekend. 
I spent pretty much all my weekend when I was a kid painting instead of playing with other kids. I was very absorbed with that. When I was in middle school, I got the offer from fine art school, but uh, I was not sure whether this is the choice I want to make. I want to keep the options open. Instead, I just choose to continue the education from a regular school. When at work, I realized there's, a, there's something I'm passionate about that I should not ignore it. Although I cannot make money on it, but I should keep pursuing it. And I joined the uh, painting club at Washington DC area since I started working in this area. And I picked up painting again. And the more I paint, the more passionate I become. I went to New York. I was selected as one of the 20 people from the world to join the big drawing marathon. And I went to New York again a few months ago just to do another three week of painting. And uh, I like to see where this is going. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, thank you. For the painters here, I'd love it if y'all could come in and just kind of do a speech on painting. That would be great. <laughs> so, very good. Okay, our next speaker, let's see. Our next speaker, uh, we'll start with the topic. The next speaker wants to share about an important choice that has to be made. And our next speaker has a pet bunny. And, <laughs> is that, yes, that's it, yes, John, okay. Um, so John has studied accounting at UVA. He has both a BS in commerce accounting and an MS in accounting taxation. Um, John, it's something unusual, he has a pet bunny, and today he's going to share about an, an important choice that he has to make. So please help me welcome John. Welcome to his master. I so miss this. <laughs> Madam Toastmaster, members and guests, my name is John Wilhelm and today I'd like to share with you a little story about choices. And, but I'm going to start with not a choice I had to make, but a choice someone else had to make. I was listening to some tapes and they were talking about a prima ballerina who was asked, what is your favorite food? And she said, my favorite food? Ice cream sundaes. Now that answer surprised the interviewer and he said, follow-up question was, how often do you eat um, these, you know, uh, ice cream sundaes? And she said, well, I haven't had one in 15 years. You see, 15 years ago, I had to make an important choice. I had to choose whether I wanted to be a prima ballerina or whether I wanted to eat ice cream sundaes. And she, of course, chose to be the prima ballerina. A couple of years ago, I had an important life choice. I had to decide whether I wanted to stay in software development or whether I wanted to pursue my passion, which is helping people with their finances. And I consulted with a career coach, and he asked me one important question that I wanted to share with you because it can help you make important choices, whether it's career or whatever. He said, what is your passion? If you could do anything in the world, what would you do, even if paid were no object? And I said, I'd be a financial advisor. He said, well, a financial advisor you shall be. And so I started on a tough journey. And that journey brought me to Toastmasters. And I had, yes, because I knew if I wanted to be a financial advisor, I had to be able to speak in public. You have to get your message out. And so that's why I joined Toastmasters, and now I have one other important choice, stay in the old system or go to Pathways, and I'm happy to announce today that I chose Pathways. Thank you. Excellent, thank you so much for that speech, Don. Very encouraging. So let's see. Well, with that, that concludes 
our speaking program for today. I just want to say thank you to everyone who participated. I really enjoyed learning about everyone and hearing the different speeches. That was pretty good. Um, we're going to move on into our evaluation portion of our program right now. And uh, I will bring up our general evaluator, who is now John. And um, just as a reminder, we're doing something a little different today. So if you have uh, an evaluation role, if you could just read this little slip before you read your report. So John, if you'd like to come on up, please. Please help me okay. welcome John. Wait a minute, I need to, do I have to call oh, yes, any of yes. the evaluators? Yes. Okay, so uh, let's see. What are the evaluators? The eva oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're not on here. Oh, okay. <laughs> you can't find them. You changed the speech evaluator? Yes, Bob is, we're having one speech evaluator today to, since the speeches are short, so Bob is going to be our, I call it a super oh, evaluator. Okay. Because he's evaluated, so he's um, the speech evaluator, and then um, there's everybody else there. Oh, and I that, see. Then you can okay. give your report. So. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> Good question. Do yes. I see the time, the evaluation as well? Um, this one uh, mm -hmm. should be should be less than five minutes. Okay, Bob, we don't have the time. Would you, would you like us to time it, Bob? Or this event, I'm, I'm sure I should keep it under five minutes. But let's handle it while I do. Okay, so if you want to three to five. Time. Okay. okay. Hello, my name is John Wilhelm. I'm your general evaluator today. Um, I would like to start by introducing, I'm going to first of all call up a couple people. First it would be the, no, the speech about, no, Bob who's going to be doing the speech evaluations and then we'll get reports from uh, the timer and the grammarian. So Bob, would you like to join us? I'll be, I'll be careful with the finger. I feel like i four fingers to scrunch with. All right. My job normally would be to evaluate a prepared speech with a prepared guideline to make certain that certain guidelines were met. Not so today. So I'm going to be looking at some good things, maybe a way to improve a little bit. In order. Why are you looking so scared? I'm sorry, Teresa, your face is getting red. <laughs> I'll stop looking. One of my bugaboos in word pronunciation, when you hear the word TR, the combination of that in a word such as attempt, what is that word? T-R-Y? Every last one of you mispronounced it because we're thinking, and I gave a presentation of this earlier, Try versus try. Listen for it. I'm not picking on you because everybody does it, but I heard it real clear. Please, move from the behind the lectern. You stay behind the whole time. But you were very encouraging. We got some new information. Muscle memory associated with painting. Who would have thunk that? Cool beans. Juan, colorful, interesting. Something about the daughter. Wow. And I mean colorful in uh, more than one way, too. And your gestures seemed a little weak. But they were there, just maybe you weren't trying to draw too much attention to your hands. I don't know. But you could do a little more. Okay. Crystal, you'll hear more about this big, big bugaboo of yours. You have lots of ums. Nothing but ums! I didn't hear an ah or an er, I heard um, um. Um, 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 um. <laughs> and, but when you were actually doing your pricks, got into the speech, there were no audible pauses whatsoever. Gee, you practiced, didn't you? <laughs> Liz, you were out from behind the lecture. You were standing here. Your gestures were there. But after the yellow card, just before the yellow card went up, you parked your hands. It's okay to do that, but is that um, planned? Was that planned, or were you feeling a little concerned? I don't know. But it was good. You're, you said it confident. You knew what you were talking about. 
you're green, you're a little, you're blue, so we'll just give that for everybody because we've had some horrendous offenders here. You were just, you didn't really cross the line, but watch the time cards. I didn't see, I didn't see that you were looking at it. Then, I'll come up on something in a minute because John did the same thing. Move more, John. Move more. That's not the same thing yet. But your talk was very pressed. It was smooth and polished. You knew what you're doing. You've advanced. You know what you're doing. There's more to come. But you are also permitted to use the old, old part since you did cross speech number three. You can still go the old path. Oh, oh right, right. I could go the old path. But I won't talk you out of it. I will just say we can learn from these decisions too. You and Liz did make the same little boo-boo. Don't say thank you when we're done. We're supposed, as listeners, we're supposed to say thank you. Thank you for taking your time to give us beautiful words of encouragement, those golden thoughts that help us all get better. We're thanking you for that. Mr. General Evaluator, it's back to you. Next, we will have the timer report, and that will be Liz. Hi, um, my goal as timer is to monitor time during prepared speeches, table topics, and evaluations. During my evaluation, I'd like to know if you deliver your presentation within the above uh, time frame. The first speaker, Teresa, your time is 2 minutes 23 seconds. Second one, Wang, 1 minute 11 seconds. Crystal, 1 minute 59 seconds. <laughs> Bob, 1 minute 56 seconds. Blaze, myself, 2 minutes, 15 seconds. John, 2 minutes, 6 seconds. And the uh, general evaluator, well, you are still doing this. Bob, the speech evaluation, 3 minutes, 53 seconds. Thank you, Liz. OK. This is kind of tough because I wasn't here at the beginning of the uh, meeting. But I would say this was a pretty good meeting considering that we're in a new space. Everything is different. Um, it's a tough time of the day to get to Tyson's. So all things said, I'd say it went pretty good. I see food, therefore I get a double check mark for food because I always grade up for food. But I, I would like to ask a question. Can I see a show of hands of the visitors today? So we're all members? You're, okay, I just want, I wasn't sure because I haven't been here at all. So you're visiting today, so you're, is it today your first time visiting? Oh, okay. Well, welcome. Oh, we'll talk during the social action portion. All right. With that, I would like to turn it back over to Madam Toastmaster. And one of my favorite people of all time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, I, oh. Yeah. Well. My role is to evaluate the meeting in general. I will call for reports from the speech evaluator, timer for Marion, and off counter. Oh. <laughs> <gasps> oh, it's a good thing I did this. Yeah, there we go. Awe counter. <laughs> that might be the Toastmaster who covers that up. <laughs> yeah, nobody corrected me. Nobody caught that. I thought I got away with not having to speak. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. In general, we did really well with the little words. Low, maybe a, a little bit more than low for um, Crystal, and I'm sure for me. But I don't have to count myself because I'm a grammarian and I count her. I um, noticed that Teresa did use the words of the day, and John did. John, no, you, you no, some, 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 
Bob did. Bob did. Okay. And I loved it. Uh, we talked about passion. Liz, John, Talenta. There were a couple of you knows and kind of. But other than that, Other than that, I really didn't hear other words, other words. And while talking about passion, while my passion is to listen to people and hear their stories, this is really hard, catching on that moment in class. And so this is a different kind of listening, and I, I will look to improve on that. Thank you, Ma. It is tough, but it's, it's important because this gives us feedback on how we're doing. We're all trying to improve. And I think that's the most important thing about Toastmasters. We're all in a different place. Good for you guys. We're all in a different place trying to improve over time. And Bob, I'd like to thank you for your, your critiques today. I like to, the one thing I look for when I hear a critique is somebody say, what you did well? what you can improve on, and then end in a strong note of what you did well, because that sort of leaves the, the person on a high note. So that's something I think we should all work on, that sandwich approach to evaluation. But other than that, I thought it was a very nice meeting, and thank you guys for all coming. And now I'd like to turn it back over to my favorite person. <laughs> So um, there's two things here. Um, one, our super evaluated and that evaluation, and that's my follower looks kind of assigning it on the agenda here. So I was wondering if we as a, a club could just give Bob a couple comments, each person or whatever, on his speech. <laughs> so if we could just do that, whoever wants to comment since we didn't. Answer. Please, go ahead. Yes, come on up. <laughs> Bob, I liked how you got from behind us. I liked how you you did some gestures. Now the one thing that kind of threw me was the little thing, but we can excuse that. It's a holiday party. We'll we'll work with it. <laughs> I was like, whoa, where'd that come from? <laughs> um, you're you're clearly polished. You were within the time, which is really important, and I am a bad offender of that, so I for me, six seconds is a huge success. I'm improving. I mean, I've had uh, 15 minutes. <laughs> it's supposed to be done in five to seven. So I'm getting better, guys. And that's what that's what it's all about is improvement. But Bob, it's it's really nice to have you here because I think the one thing that we didn't have last year was somebody who's going to tell us we were too nice last year. <laughs> you know, we didn't really. And I think that kept us from improving at a faster rate. So I really appreciate that you're honest with us. Thank you so much. <laughs> Let's see, did anyone else care to give comments? If so, you can come up or just stand and give them from where you are. Bob, I'm going to say I enjoyed your gestures too. Um, <laughs> sorry for the um, but. <laughs> You know, they say you're not supposed to turn your back on the audience, so we got your backside. But it was, it was part of the speech. I thought it was good. So, great speech. And I can't think of anything where you need to improve because, unfortunately, your speech was funny. So it kind of <laughs> distracted me from whatever I would have said anyway. Anyone else care to comment or critique on? I guess I didn't. Okay. Did because I? You, you both covered it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I always so. enjoyed listening to your yeah. speeches. Mm -hmm. They're very entertaining. Yes. So thank you. Okay, so great. If there's nothing else with that, um, we, we're going to move into our teaching moment in just a bit. Um, Teresa, McCoy, Teresa McCoy is going to do our teaching on pathways and the Humor Mill website. But what we're going to do is take like a five minute intermission to uh, get her set up. I was going to suggest everybody get something to eat and drink. Okay, great. So if you want to do that, and we'll meet back in like a. Uh, what is it? 7:32. <laughs> Which is like a weird time. Oh, 7:35. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was in Colombia the last.
while back, and uh, every time I go to Bogota, which is 8,000 feet, it's right on the equator, but it's 8,000 feet. So it's cool. You are hell of a and these people oh, walk around. Oh, oh, that's wow. that's it's, four, it's 60 degrees outside. I had some so they're going to die oh, right. because they're, because they're yeah. used to 80 and 90 degree oh, weather. I've got a friend who's uh, about your yeah. height, perhaps a little skinnier. All right, There's everybody. No fat. In the summertime, we're going to We're going to go ahead and, degrees, and, and put me back in my computer educator role. Uh, I always said that, uh, my mom said that my computer science degree was a waste because that's not where my passion is. And I said, no, actually it's not a waste because I have used it so much in terms of it being a tool for effectiveness and efficiency. Um, if it wasn't for that, I think I'd be pulling my hair out even more. So that's why I ventured into the depth that I did with us getting computerized because I knew that it was going to benefit. It's taken us a little bit of time, but we're there. First, terminology. Toastmasters.org. That is Toastmasters International website. That's where um, they take care of all of that. Humor Mill website is not a Toastmasters.org website at all. It's unaffiliated. The domain says Toastmasterclubs.org. I make that distinction because the information on Toastmasters.org in terms of our membership and dues and all of that is not in here. We refer to this as Free Toast Host because Free Toast Host are the developers of these club websites. They created the templates and everybody else gets the benefit of using it. They've got the back end. They really need to update it because these are not responsive. They don't go over to the mobile phones very well. I mean, you, you're still looking at the big website and you've got to shrink and enlarge. It doesn't change. Hopefully, Free Toast Host will change that. In the meantime, I now understand the back end of it and everything. So to get to our Humor Mill Club website, we go to humormillclub.toastmastersclubs.org. That we need to make sure is in new member letter. Now that us three have got a bet, no, Crystal, Bob, and I, <laughs> between the three of us, we, we've each solved problems um, that were necessary for us to use this as a club. So now we want to start advertising people, new members, to utilize this. Step one is the fact that the members need to be manually added in. So if you're a new member, like Liz, Liz could only access main mem menu. She could not access any of the member features because she had not been put into this. She was a member at Toastmasters.org. She was a member. But there's an extra step. We've got to add it into here. The first thing I'm going to do is go through the overview. The home page. Anybody who's got any graphic design or is a wordsmith, we can always modify this. This is not set in stone. I figured out how to put the meeting dates up there. And so it's easy enough. I'm trying to convince our guest in the back room to become our webmaster. <laughs> oh, this is where our meeting information goes. So again, anytime we make changes, that should be updated. The contact us, this is, this is just to help the new members get an overview, plus many of us have never even looked at this. 
This is where somebody comes. If they search for us on Toastmasters.org, it sends them here. And then they fill out this form. And then the VPM, the VPE, myself, will get an email that somebody has inquired. And then it's up to one of the three of us to respond back. And how quickly is your, is your target turnaround time? I respond within the 24 hours of getting a message. Same here. But we just haven't had a whole lot of messages. Okay. But there is one notable person who did respond, and uh, I don't want to make her feel bad, but she's here now. This. It worked well for you, yes? Yeah. Okay. And also Lee, we got she you too. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. And Lee was pre-me. Yes. Yes. So um, that's what this contact us form does. The other nice thing, people who come here don't see our direct emails, but the email comes to us like mine says president five six whatever our club number is. I don't have it. You have it memorized. <laughs> okay. My first club only had four digits. But it, it, oh, it cool. is then forwarded to the email I have on file. So it comes directly to me. I don't have to log into another email oh, system. It's a good forwarding system. It is, <clears throat> it is just a forwarding system. But it's a good mask. Now this is what our homework is. Everybody, meet our members. We only have two members. Exactly. Ooh, I'm on there. No, you're not. Well, I don't want my puppet. So I'm down. <laughs> I'm down below. It says uh, make their profiles public. So I'm, I'm down below, like on the members only section. Right. So only <laughs> members are allowed to see oh, you. Oh, okay. So yeah. I have to be public now. Okay. Yes. I'll come out to the public. And there is there is a restriction on what gets shown publicly, so you don't have to worry about that. And you can do. Notice the difference between the two pictures. One of them has put more contact information up than the other, and that's fine. Okay. Right. I went ahead and put my social. Now I have to get everything all um, consistent. <laughs> so our homework is to fill out our little bios. Okay, so and our bios do have a restriction. Uh, I'll get to that in a minute, but there's a limit to the number of words that you're allowed. It's actually the number of characters that you're allowed. So they cannot be long paragraphs. <clears throat> Two to three sentences max. We have a club calendar. All right? And I have put every single TLI event on here. You click on it, and it takes you to the Toastmasters.org. So that, oh, cancel. And am I logged in? Yeah. That's why I'm logged in. Okay, I'll say, wait a minute. Log out. There we go. Now, District 18, which is the other Toastmasters group that I'm affiliated with, I can't believe it. All of their Toastmasters are within the first two weeks of January, and there's no more TLIs. I was like, wow. With all the snow we get? So, it, I clicked on it, on the calendar, and it brought me here to register. You do not need to be a member to go, uh, um, an officer to go to the Toastmasters Leadership Institute. And I highly recommend it, by the way. I do too. Yeah, they're really good. Public downloads, if there's any information we want to share with the general public, they can go to the public downloads. We just have to upload it. What do we have up there now? Um, I don't know. Have fun and go explore. <clears throat> All right. I clicked on free resources. That brings us to Toastmasters.org. The reason for clicking on free resources is because coming here 
brings us to Pathways. There's many ways to get to Pathways, but I wanted the way that required the members to go to our website and not be confused. We go to our website. Now what I do want to do is put a Pathways link directly. That'll bring us to this next page, but free resources already existed. You know, I didn't have time to figure that one out. So you go to our website, free resources, and then pathways. And that brings us into pathways. I'm going to finish with the to free toast host before we go into pathways. There's your docs, John. Yeah, there, there's your three documents for right now. Uh, people who have manuals, the competent communicator and leadership manuals, the PDF versions are here. And there's frequently asked questions. And anytime you are an improv master, there is an improv basics and games link. Oh, nice. Okay. And now th this 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 goes to the prior administration. I did not create this. It, I discovered it. <laughs> And there's this improv encyclopedia.org games <laughs> link that you can go to if you have to come up with some improv ideas. The rest requires you to be a member. Meeting agendas. I can't click on them right now. I'm not logged in. All right. So. But it has all. It, it stores all the agendas, or just the just, just, just just the ones that we entered in through here. Okay. okay. Now, to log in, for those who are brand new and have never logged in before, what's going to happen? You start entering in your email and it should populate with your name. Now, I can't choose this because that is that does not work. I have to put in my home. There we go. That's my Toastmasters username. The password is different, can be different. You choose if you're going to make it the same password that you use on Toastmasters.org. All right, but the two don't communicate. So now that I'm logged in as a member, I can come down here, oops, and I can go and look at the meeting agendas. And this again, you have to already be entered in as a member. So the procedure has to be membership person, you know, the, the member application is processed and then this needs to be updated because if this is not updated like Liz couldn't get in in order to sign up to be, do her icebreaker <clears throat> we just put Bob in as a filler Bob just put Bob in as a filler this was a smart idea yeah it's just taken a minute sometimes if the page doesn't want to load just hit your reload arrow in the address bar. So here's our venue. Here's our agenda for today. You can come up here to view another agenda. And here are our next four meetings. Well, we have the, the other December meeting, but if you go and click on that December meeting, it's already been set up to where nobody can actually register. There we go. Canceled no meeting. All right. So that information is up to date. Now the advantage of the meeting agendas is you actually sign up. And when you're given a speech, you have to enter in what manual, and the Pathways manual activities are already in there. That's what I was looking for today. 
And so if we go to the first meeting in January, there we go. The next piece of information is I would like everybody to sign up for their roles for the next two meetings so that these roles are set and then we'll worry about the speeches and um, hopefully be able to encourage the other members to sign up as well. You sign up for your speaker or Toastmaster, whatever, whatever the role may be, and you tell it what manual or speech you're giving. And if I'm giving the one out of the pathways, yeah, I go all the way down. There we go. Oh, I was already in pathways. Okay, so pathways has multiple paths, etc. And what you'll notice, like motivational, if I'm using motivational strategies path, I have to find it. Then I choose what activity I'm on in that path. Does it uh, blank out the ones you've already completed? I can't answer nope. that. No. It will, it, that requires too much. You know what you've done. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's from the you get your you get your speech from the pathway path on the main web page. Right. And, and and they don't talk. They don't talk they to don't. each other. Okay. That's okay. We just need to If you know. want to repeat and get no and get uh, accolades for doing something nice, yes, but you want to get credit. Okay. Project and speech title. This is going to make it a lot easier for the Toastmaster and putting the agenda together. And with that, you enter in your speech introduction. All of this needs to be done by the Friday before the Tuesday. All right? Because then it has to go and it has to be properly formatted and printed. So our deadlines really need to be the Friday. It's all speeches have to be entered in the Friday before the Tuesday they're given. And from there, the roles we really want to be entered in no later than Sunday. And this helps the Toastmaster. Everybody. Well, you, even that, even Sunday, doesn't give the Toastmaster a whole lot of time. Well, the Toastmaster is the one who's supposed to be making sure these roles are filled. Right. So that being the case, they, the, the Toastmaster can, can be working on it and know who's sitting on the fence and hasn't made the okay. decision, but really needs to have those decisions by Sunday. Because if it's, this is used, it's only a push of a button to get it printed. Does the Toastmaster of the day have access to people's members phone numbers so yes that, all right that's great it, yes once you're logged in as a member you now have access um, this is also where you come to edit your profile uh -huh. you've got to be logged in as a member and you can come in here and set up all the fields and the bio it's about 100 words or fewer. 650 characters is all you have available. So, you know, we're not looking for a big speech. You have the private member directory. And yes, Crystal's here, Robert's here, Lee's here. Okay. John is here. Oh, I'm there? Yeah. Cool. All people who are entered in, Liz is on here. She just doesn't have a picture or a bio. Oh, but my picture's not on there, right? No. Um, it will be. Only if you upload one. Okay. Yeah, I'll try to get a picture from 20 We have uh, the ability for member downloads. Now, there's a reason why I'm spending a little bit more time here. Because the pathway stuff, I've already created videos. And the links are already on Facebook to review what I'm going to 
whiz through very quickly. So these are downloads. Like we have our guest sign-in sheet is here. That means uh, we have executive committee minutes here. You know, we have to decide if we were using Facebook because doing it here requires the VPPR do it. Facebook, any of us can upload a file. All right. So I still prefer the Facebook Avenue. Yeah, if we had somebody who was constantly and that their only function was to keep this up to date, then we could email them the file say go upload it and stuff. But free toast host only allows three officers per any specific function. So there are functions here for count for um, treasurer functions, um, membership management. The president is the only one who can touch all functions. And anything else down here that you need? No. But if there's ever a, a need for a new agenda, we would set it up down here. Those agendas had to be manually set up first before we could use them. And if we decide to change our format at any time, we just create a new agenda template. Now that everything's set up, it won't be too hard. So, that being said, let's maneuver on to pathways. I like pathways, all right? But then I used to develop um, online learning systems. It still needs some work, but it's 1.0, so they're working. Those, Pretty nice 1.0. It is a very nice 1.0. What I like about Pathways is for a club like us that is young and we don't have, Bob is our most experienced member. And, you know, we don't, he can't be all of our mentor as much as we'd like it. Yeah, we don't have personal mentors. Pathways helps with that because the purpose of a mentor is to take a new member through the first three projects, orient them on the roles in the club, uh, the preparations needed for each role, as well as how to give their speeches, write their speeches, critique for at least the first three speeches, which is equivalent to about the first three months. So for the first three months, if you've got a physical mentor, you are learning everything that's in all of these Toastmasters documents, provided your mentor knows that. And with Pathways, that has now been resolved. You don't have to have the world's best mentor in order to get everything that, you know, to make you excel quicker. When you click on the Pathways option, now, we are in Toastmasters.org, but how did we get here? Right. Humor Mill. Resources. Free resources. And that brought us here until I get a Pathways link directly. And then the Pathways link directly will bring us So we'll automatically log you in to when you transfer from our no. free toast host? No. Remember, they don't talk to each other. No. Uh oh. No. And, and we're jumping. What's going to happen is when we put the link up, um, we're going to have to have two links. The one link <coughs> so that you can come and directly log in, because it'll take you to this page. And the other link would be for brand new people, take the assessment. I encourage you on your own to go through Learn More because it's it's more videos and text to help 
you understand pathways and the procedures. So what the first step you want to do is take the assessment. And look at that. You can't take the assessment unless you're a member. So I don't need a second link now. I was doing it all before, and I was jumping to this next screen. So hold on, let me log in. And by the way, the assessment takes like two minutes. It, it's not very long. The assessment. The tricks to the assessment, though, are you must do it in one sitting. Mm -hmm. yeah. You do it in one sitting, and it does not save your responses or the feedback it gives you. So when it gives you your three paths at the tail end, I recommend that you control P to print it. And if you know how to print it to a PDF, then you can save it. All right, so, so these are my three results. And only because of going to the conference did I know to do this. Otherwise, you can't go back later and say, oh yeah, what did it recommend for me again? You have to take the assessment all over again. And, funny thing. And they answer it the same way. Right, because I took the assessment again today just to do the video. I got three completely different pads. So now I've got six recommended pads out of ten. I was like, really not one of them overlapped? Well, I mean, it was like, the first three made sense. I'm just wondering what in the world, how I answered it the second time in order to get those different pads. So, you click on take the assessment. <coughs> and then, take the assessment. Select okay, your... Is that because the assessment just randomly gives you pass? No, I got a feeling that I was more exact the first time I took it. And this time, I just did a lot of three, uh, what I would call twos and fours versus ones and fives, because the ones and fives are like, you strongly agree or disagree. And you have to select your language, and then you just go through. Go through, finish it up, and at the end, it'll spit out your little responses. And for mine, I've got motivation, well, it recommended dynamic leadership as my first one to work on. Effective coaching and motivational strategies. I, however, chose motivational strategies because it, for me, encompasses several areas where I need improvement versus leadership. And then I can choose to do leadership as another path. So, once you take the assessment, you choose your path. Now, here's the thing. Once you choose a path, you can't unchoose it. You can purchase another path, all right? So, during the assessment, it'll bring you to this screen, but if you don't choose your path immediately after the assessment because you want to review the different paths, you get to it again from choose a path. This is also where you get to access your path. If you're a dual club member, it'll show both clubs. You pick which club you're assigning it to. Well, that's kind of nice. Now, before you pick your path, here's what I, this, navigator. Everybody needs to go through the navigator. Do not skip the navigator. What? You're telling me that now? Okay. Well, it, it, it doesn't affect your path. It's just that once a person picks their path, they usually wind up getting engrossed in that. And it's like, you really want to do the navigator. What Even does the navigator do? 
Navigator is so cool, and there's a video on Facebook. Okay. okay. What, but, but what it does is it goes through all the different aspects for a meeting as a new person. Roles, what they do, uh, speeches, confidence, why people, it, there's, there's just a lot of meaty information, but it's multi-sensory information, and that's why I like it. All right, you're getting it auditorily, visually, and you're clicking. So you've got your gross motor skills in there too. So you recommend doing that before choosing a path? I would. Okay. Because, you know, choosing a path is making a commitment. Navigator will help you with the meetings whether or not. And those of us who haven't really done anything yet, this, or, or are new, this also helps you understand meeting structures. So you don't even have to, you know, be focusing on your path yet. Yes, Chris. Um, you said you can assign your path to a club if you're in more than one club. So, um, what do, like, how does that matter? So, if I assign one path to human meal, another path to seeing them. Each of you, it matters because <clears throat> while you will get credit for your completion, the club gets credit when you complete the path. For DTM, I mean, distinguished club. Okay. So she's full gotcha. club. I may end up that way in another little bit. Which club do you choose <clears throat> to get the credit? And as I was reading something, I need to verify this a little bit more, but it looks like as we're doing the, uh, the recognition, we can't mix pathways and traditional. Right. They have to be all one or all the other. Correct. What, what, what do you mean? Pathways number one. The first path, completion, or the old CC. Right. We have to get, was it four and two? We can't have two and one. Right. Okay, you know how you, you got to have four CCs to earn a point? Or oh, 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 you mean for, for distinguished, the distinguished club. club. Okay. Right? They, they, have, they have the old requirements, and they have pathways requirements. All right, so, and this year is is going to be tough. Is it based on pathways or the old one? Both. Both. But each point. Until 2020. Oh, and then in 2020, it's all pathways. In one category. Uh, my next advanced speaker award will take care of some of that point, but we can't put pathways two and pathways three in that area to you get two points. We either do the advanced under the old school or the, or the, or the advanced pathway. Now we can put, now we'll probably have this here for a little bit. All right, so my CC basically is good. It's in. Because, because it's completed. Right, and because and, and one more point, and we are a distinguished club. Okay. All right, Whether, even without pathways. Even we without just need five. And we will hit the distinguished club um, oh, level. So, and it's basically, we're waiting for Elizabeth to finish her CC, but now we... All she has to do is give me the paperwork and I can enter it online. However, I'll on Monday, so I'll get out. she's I'll get out. not a member anymore. She didn't submit it while she was still a member. She mm -hmm. may have to be a member um, for them to acknowledge it because they don't, they don't post, they don't post date it. They don't go backwards and say, oh, but you completed it. While you were still a mentor, you get your CC no. certificate. you're sending us the certificate. You're sending us the form now. Your CC is going to be dated for today. Okay. It's not going to be dated for the day you gave your tenth speech. Okay. It's the day you submitted. Oh. You have to reload the page. Yeah. Now, what I have here, and this is, this is helpful for Liz, anybody who did their icebreaker and they're still in the old manual and they want to transfer their icebreaker, they can. All right, there's a special form. I already gave it to Liz because she gave her, her icebreaker. Still go through the pathways, exercise. 
so that in case there's any information that is beneficial that you might not have learned during your first icebreaker, but you don't necessarily have to re-give the speech. And then talk to Bob and he'll do what he needs to do in the back end. When you go to give a speech from the pathways, you are responsible for printing out and bringing with you your evaluation form in order to give to whoever is evaluating you, much like bringing your manual. And you have to designate your evaluator because the evaluator goes in and checks off. Right. And provides feedback there. So this is where... Oh, so you can't have a last minute evaluator. We can probably tweak it a little bit, but, it's, but you won't it's be able... It's harder. But if you're, if you're evaluating Teresa under Pathways, but someone else is supposed to do it, she has to go in and change it before you can enter it. Right. Okay. All right. So, so you won't be able to do it that night. You have to wait, maybe wait a day or two. But if you forget, she's going to come after you. Exactly. So it's your job as the speaker, if something happens and evaluators change, it's your job to keep on track that you get, you know, the recognition. You get a speech outline for each one of the projects, and you can print them out. So, there are five core competencies, and I'm also giving a link for District 29 because that's where I got all of these from, and then I just printed them out. So you, you have five core competencies to complete with, to, to develop with Pathways. Public speaking, interpersonal communication, strategic leadership, management, and confidence. These are the different levels. Now, what equals a CC? That was 10 speeches. It was 10 speeches. That, but what's the, the equivalent in Pathways? I haven't seen that one yet. It looks like it's about the same number. So I'm thinking that it's a combination of level one and level two. Well, how many speeches are with level one? Is it five or three? Oh, three? Yeah. <clears throat> That's why I'm thinking it's the combination of level one and level two. You'll see this in a minute. So then there are ten paths. So all of these competencies are covered in all of the paths. The paths are the different areas that you want to focus on. Dynamic leadership, effective coaching, innovative planning, leadership development, motivational strategies, persuasive influence, presentation mastery, strategic relationships, team collaboration, visionary communication. All of these things are available. That's what you're deciding. All of the exercises, all of the projects are developed in order to enhance that particular area of concentration. So if, if you choose persuasive influence, all of your speeches are going to have to have a component of persuasive influence. And then they all have the different five levels. So the fundamentals for level one are the icebreaker, evaluation and feedback, researching and presentation. That's what's covered in level one. And then in level two, you get learning your style, understanding your leadership style, understanding your communication style, and introduction to Toastmasters mentoring. You cannot just be a mentor. You have to go through a certification process to be a mentor. But what's level three? How many speeches are three? Now, Level three is when you start getting more in depth and the negotiating the best outcome. Well, this is for dynamic leadership. If you were doing the dynamic leadership path. I say that because level three in effective coaching is increasing knowledge. And level three in innovative planning is also increasing knowledge. Present a proposal. Leadership development, level three, increasing knowledge, planning and implementation. So these are the projects for each level, or the, the skills that are being covered. 
create a podcast, building a social media presence. And then over here, this is actually this section. That's why I said you want to look. You can look through this catalog online, the Toastmaster District 29. Oh, is that something they sent you? It's, it's on their website. I just downloaded it and printed it. Huh. And what this does is like for dynamic leadership, these are all of the projects. And it tells you, uh, you get to choose two. You have required activities and then you have electives. You don't have to do all of these activities. And they overlap into other disciplines. My question is, if the skill covers multiple disciplines, do you still have to, when you go into your second path, do you still have to complete that activity again? Again, if it's a required activity, yes. If it's an elective and you've already done it in one, you choose a different elective for this path. And then these are all project descriptions back here. So this is just something for people who want to see things on paper. When you're in Pathways and you've already selected your path, you go to base camp. You can go to base camp directly. Now I'm just wondering if it's going to allow you to see things you wouldn't see since I'm an officer. Because only There's the president and here. the VPE. There, and the secretary. And the secretary. So, Juan, you also have this back end. Have you gone into Pathways yet, John? Today. We're not going to see anything very oh, okay. close. Okay. So, I'm going to log in as a member, not the base camp manager. So, Juan, Bob, and myself are base camp managers. And this is what Pathways looks like once you've chosen your path and you start going, working. So, um, I'm working on the motivational strategies. It's open. I don't understand this, though. The 360 evaluation resource. Well, I'll click on it. Oh, you can't. There we go. It says mark complete, and I have no clue. So there's going to be a lot of questions as people tinker around, and you're going to wind up doing what I did. <laughs> it's like, well, that's a cool form, but I'm reading it. Leadership, I don't understand it. I got a Pathways Ambassador to ask about this. Well, I'm not going to get to us in the Yeah, you're okay. But it's, it's, we're enjoying it. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is. Um, so, the rest of this, just go through the tutorials. You've got Navigating the Base Camp, and there are tutorials left and right. Take advantage of the tutorials. I just wanted you to be able to see how to go through the navigator, how to actually take the pathways assessment, and be able to log in in the back end. So if I'm ready to go work on my project again, I can't do anything except the icebreaker. That's the Which nice thing. you can transfer over from what you've done. Right. And I, I gave Liz the form. And we want to talk to John Legazia he's basically only done his icebreaker, so True. he should transfer over. Um, let's see. Oh, so you're saying if you're beyond three speeches, you, you can really go either way. You should consider staying with the traditional path. Right. Because you'll lose something. Yes. Gotcha. Right, but one, two, and three, one, two, and three, you know, if you're on speech four, 
Okay, I'm on speech four. I get, did I get four? I remember off the top of my head. It's in your book. Yeah, uh, okay, but I, I know I'm, I'm on speech four. So, you did four. Uh, that's yeah, what I thought. I did, I did, yeah. I did four. So I I'm ready to hit speech me. five. And oh, so yeah, which way are you going? going? You're going I'm, that way. I'm doing both. You're going to do both? Yes. I'm going to continue with the, the old manual, all right? But I'm also going to do this. That doesn't mean that all of my speeches are coming from here. All right, that I, I may decide, oh, this month I'm doing a pathway speech, this month I'm doing a CC speech. I have two clubs now. So uh, I may just for the moment give most of my pathway speeches there until we get things gelling. That way all of our efforts can be spent with the new members who mandatorily need to be in pathways but I'm still getting the experience I need with Pathways in order to help us here. So, and that's it. You can go in, you've got your own profile, add a picture. People are supposed to be able to communicate, give each other badges, make it fun, give each other evaluations. I don't know how all of that works yet, and Bob only has me logged in at the moment. So there's a lot that base camp, our base camp managers have to still figure out because we don't have the population in there yet. As soon as Liz logs on, that makes it even better. Yeah, I think, I think you, you spend like half an hour on pathways and you're going to see that, oh, this is, this is kind of nice. Because like you said, that you can do the video tutorials right there. Mm-hmm. Um, that must be your artwork. Yeah. yeah. Oh, actually, yeah, that is, that is, Very pretty. this was a digital piece, and I have oh, since okay. turned it into a canvas. I love the sun. Thank you. Um, what I wanted to, Facebook, I put the videos on Facebook. Sorry, I need to be earlier. I still have work to do. Sure. And if you want to grab anything to take yeah, with you. Um, in Facebook, I have, I uploaded the slower videos of how the toast toast and then pathways so they're two separate videos and then I've done a third video that we send to new members which shows them how to find us on Facebook so that they can then watch the other videos. I saw those today. I didn't see them all. I yeah, I have a, a program for editing that that actually does screen recording. Oh, okay. So I was like, well, let's see how easy this is. And it also allowed me to start doing dry runs for tonight. And I was like, the videos are needed because I can't do all of this in 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, it's good. I saw the beginning of it. It was a good so. Yeah. It's a how-to, and see that's the thing. I, I, I'm I'm okay with a how-to. I think I'm gonna keep this. It's the engaging, entertaining, you know, trying to deliver information in a different way, okay. other than step-by-step how-to. Okay, that's good to know. Because I actually need to do a quick evaluation on you. So the two. Okay. Okay. Is that all right? Are you finished? Yeah. Okay. Master, master, master. All right. So. Uh, that was uh, Teresa's um, teaching moment today. If we could all just give her a round of applause for the wonderful job. Thank you very much, Teresa. Really and I forgot to include this in my agenda, or I wasn't really thinking, but maybe we can give Teresa a quick evaluation because she mentioned some things that she wants to add to her presentation. Um, Teresa, do you mind do you mind uh, just repeating those again? And then, hey, Bob, can you just do you mind? And I just want to see if people had have things they can add examples of how you can make your appreciation sure. more dynamic. Bye, bye, Liz. Merry bye. Christmas to you. Uh, Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Bye bye. <clears throat> what, I was, what I was explaining to Crystal was me step by step how to, I'm comfortable with. I don't have a problem. Yeah, a couple but, of bombs, but big deal. You're right. my friends. But the reason for Toastmasters is because I want to be more engaging and 
entertaining, you know, not dry and, oh, I'd rather look at my phone kind of thing. You know, so that's why I joined the Toastmasters, to get away from the step one, step two, how to, this is what you do, and be able to be more interactive. And One thing I think that might help you is to incorporate some stories into your presentations. Because that will make it a little more interesting for you know, your audience, they can get caught up in the story, and that story can relate to your main point. That's very good. That's good. Does that help you too? I, I, I give credit to Challenger Toastmasters. Okay. That's the Challenger. advice. That's the advice they gave me. Yeah, well, that was good. Yeah, that is. Because when I do an introductory class, introduction to computers, it's all loaded with stories. Okay. The ways that they can correlate and relate why, why a trash can kind of thing. Okay. And how are the file structures, you know, what's this directory name and all of this other stuff. And when I was able to relate it that way, but as I got higher up in the technical ability, all of a sudden it was more do, do, do. And the other thing you can do is you can incorporate personas into your presentations. So, <clears throat> like, uh, uh, Bob the Bullfighter, or, or, or you know, yeah. whatever, you know, yeah. Yeah. whatever you want to, you know, you can give the person a, you can sort of like personify the whatever point you're making, or who would benefit from it, or whatever. And I think that will also make it a little more engaging and easier for the audience to relate. Because again, they're getting caught up in the story. People like stories. You know? So maybe the newspaper <coughs> that you were speaking of as you go through this, maybe could be a persona. Is that what you're saying, John? A persona, maybe the new member? Yeah, like, like Nellie Newby. Yeah, so that makes it kind of goofy, but you know. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and so, you know, what is she going to do? And, you know, what are the questions that she has? And you can make it like a story, and then you can answer her questions oh. through your speech. And that can give you some structure, and yet incorporate the persona, which I think will be more interesting for the people. That's very good. Also, I don't know if there's a way you can incorporate your artwork somehow. <laughs> I don't know, because we were all like, ooh, beautiful, but I don't know if you can incorporate that. I, I think if know. I spent more time preparing and not doing this this morning. That's okay. <laughs> it was great. It was great. But yeah, it, the, these are all great, great okay. ideas. It's like, honestly, I wish I could have had two screens. The one for the PowerPoint and then the one for the go-to. But flipping back and forth in environments like this, the, the Wi-Fi can get slow. Yeah. And I was like, I know we're on a time frame. And I'm like John. I don't stick to my time frames yeah, okay. very well. No, that's, that's a perfectly impressive. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> Do we have six members here today? Uh, One, two, three, yes. four, five, six. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't sure whether Liz was. Anyone have anything else to add to us?